This split-second image of Superstorm Sandy in last week's Time magazine was taken by photographer Stephen Wilkes, who usually operates at a more leisurely pace. Father Teichner shows us how he does it as time goes by. Pretend you're a bird, peering down from morning till night over New York's Coney Island on a perfect July day. This is what you'd see speeded up now try to imagine capturing that whole time in one photograph. So if you follow this line right through here, this is where the transition happens from day into night. And one of the things I loved was that these two gentlemen were on opposite sides of that line. We thought we'd tell you about photographer Stephen Wilkes, who in a manner of speaking, changes time. Day and night in the same photograph can't be. Of course, Stephen Wilkes made it happen. I wanted the right side of this photograph to be day. I knew that was going to be the most exciting time to photograph the beach. And I knew that the night was going to be the amusement park because that's the magic time. And that middle area, the boardwalk, was going to be the really perfect area to see that transition. Coney Island is only one of the New York scenes he subjected to time travel. He calls the series Day to Night. This is the Flatiron Building on September 11, 2010. The towers of light like ghosts of the Twin Towers against the night sky. It's almost a, a celebration of what New York is to me and a love poem or sonnet, whatever, to, to the city that I love so much. This is Central Park, the day and night after an ice storm. So here's how he does it. You never really know what you're going to see until you get up above it. That's when it gets really exciting. This is very cool. Yeah. To get that bird's eye view, Wilkes rents a bucket truck named after a bird, the Condor. I told my wife, you know what, instead of that sports car when I'm, you know, 60, maybe a Condor would be nice. My own private yeah, you, one. Yeah, you want your very own bucket truck. Yeah, maybe. my own bucket truck, yeah. It's dawn on a cold morning, again in Central Park, uh, last fall. You can see this is starting, already beginning to happen up here with the light and everything that's coming on. That's beautiful. Isn't that killer? Yeah, yeah, right wow. here. Wow. The weather forecast, sun, and as important, no wind. My eyes are always scanning the scene. I mean, I'm, I'm really never, uh, to be, I'm, we're talking now and I'm already like getting jumpy. I gotta get working. With his cameras mounted to the platform and a computer, he's stuck up there with his assistant for the duration. No bathroom breaks. For the next 15 hours, Wilkes takes pictures from the same spot. What will turn out to be 1,400 individual images of the world passing before his lens. All little chapters in the story of the day taking shape as time goes by. For a while, with musical accompaniment, and then a transition to darkness, a moody end to the story. Well, this photograph was the inspiration, really, for the whole concept, I think. In 1996, Life magazine sent Stephen Wilkes to take one long panoramic photograph of the cast and crew from Baz Luhrmann's film of Romeo and Juliet. Thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. But because of the shape of the set, he couldn't. So he decided to take lots of photographs and collage them together. I got to the center and I had Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes embracing. But in the mirror over here, they're kissing. And when I put this together, I had realized suddenly that I had, in essence, changed time in a single photograph, and it, it, it stayed with me. Until years later, technology made day to night possible. You know, you can just see the way the light moves. It's, it's pretty exciting. I love when the lights come up, you know. It's like, OK, that's ready. Remember Central Park in the fall? Back at his studio in Connecticut, the first thing Stephen Wilkes has to do is decide, literally, where to draw the line, where day ends and night will begin in the final print. And you can actually see it 
as time changes. The next step is to look at every one of the images he shot, collect his favorites, then digitally fit them together like puzzle pieces. You could go blind looking at 1,400 of those. Yeah, and you're looking for some small, tiny, nuanced detail. Like the brides. The brides started to evolve. I mean, it, basically, I saw one in the morning, midday. I mean, they literally were showing up all day long. Here they all are in the finished photograph. It was really kind of, it became almost like a Where's Waldo. As I was shooting, I kept noticing, oh my God, there's another bride here. What took that one October day to shoot took four months to turn into this. The changing of the time in a single photograph and all the little visual stories. And that's what's been so much fun about it. I mean, it's, it is as complex a, a, a project as I, I think I frankly could have ever imagined. And it's a, it's a challenge and I love challenges. How's that exposure making? So Stephen Wilkes is still at it. And if New York City icons aren't challenge enough, he's thinking Shanghai, Jerusalem, the world. <laughs>